How do you put the cart before the horse? That is a very important question when it comes to some aspects of design intent. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I do that. Now, something I mentioned in the prior design intent video was something called edge distance. When you are designing anything that has a hole in it or a pocket or anything along those lines, especially holes, there's a certain amount of distance you want to have from the edge to the hole, depending on the material, how thick it is, is it a composite, is it a metallic, is it plastic, how big the hole is. There are certain requirements that you have to maintain in order to make sure you do not get a part failure. So edge distance becomes absolutely critical to make sure your holes are in the correct position away from that edge. So design intent, and this is true for any CAD system that uses an expression and has a parameter, it's very important that you understand how to use those expressions and parameters. So here's my block. I'm gonna put in a whole series along this edge. I don't know how far away that whole series needs to be. So I do know I have a hole that is going to sit on this top face. So what I'm gonna do is put in a hole on this top face, just this temporary through body, subtract, and I'm gonna use, and start out with a 19 millimeter. Okay, so these expressions are going to be created and placed in my expressions editor. This is true for any CAD system that uses an expression like this. Okay, this is going to work for CATIA. It'll give it names. This is going to work for SOLIDWORKS and Solid Edge. It's going to give those parameters names. Those names can be used at any time. So there isn't a specific timestamp order for the name of the parameter that's generated. So I am going to place that in there. Notice I have my chamfers in there. Everything is beautiful. Now what I want to do is I'm going to take a look at my 19 drill hole size. I'm going to come down here. There's my diameter. It is P78 is the expression that is given. In this case, in NX, it gives it a P value. In Katia, it'll have a name for where it's located, etc. But it'll be there. So in this case, it's P78. Now I'm gonna go in and I wanna take and create a formula that allows me to control the datum plane to position the holes that I wanna generate. So I'm gonna click on the extrude before the hole is generated. Now notice, I'm gonna go into my tools expressions. And once that comes up, I'm gonna scroll through here there is my P78. It's in there. Doesn't matter that I suppressed it or made current object or whatever. Doesn't matter. It's there. It's there to be used. So now I'm going to give this a group. We'll say you may have different hole sizes. It is strongly recommended that you minimize the different sized holes that you have in a part for the sake of manufacturing. Every tool change takes time and time adds money to manufacturing, which we try to minimize. So always try to find a hole size that can be common across, or if you have to use more than one, then two or three tops, and it's not always the case, unfortunately, but minimize the different hole sizes that you have. So that's hole size number one. I'm gonna tab over. What I want, I want a formula. This is gonna be two times P78 plus, maybe I want a little bit extra, okay? Say one millimeter. 39. So what's P78? It's 19 millimeters. Two times 19 is 38 plus 1 is 39. Select OK. So 
I can now come in, offset my datum plane, whatever distance I want. I'll just pick this one because it's easier to pick. Come over here, we'll say whole size. I start typing, I get my value and select OK. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place my points and link them to that datum. Yes, I can dimension each individual point if I want to, but as everybody knows, that's ever watched one of my videos, I am extremely lazy and I do not like to work that hard, especially when edits are going to be involved. So I set up a datum and I'm gonna go into sketch. I'm gonna sketch on this plane right we're smart designers if you take any of my courses you'll know how very i'm very specific about the things that i pick how i pick them i talk about design intent heavily in all of my courses and it's not something that i forget just because i'm showing you something i some of my courses are a little bit longer because it is all a part of that intent all right off my high horse Come back in. Now I'm going to position several points in my sketch to that plane. And you can pick that included line. In fact, it's much easier just to pick the included line. And I really like it. I know, I know people don't like me from liking it. I'm going to finish. And I'm going to go back to my hole. Now I'm going to double click on it. What I want to do is I am going to come in here. I do not want this point. All right. So I'm going to hit shift on the keyboard and deselect it. And now I want to pick these points. So I'm going to come in to say feature points. Pick that fella. Look at that. They all come right along. The only thing you may want to pay attention to, because sometimes things get a little buggered up, depending on what you're doing and how you're doing it, is the vector. So if you have a specific tooling vector, oftentimes I just I am not happy with simply using whatever face I'm picking. I like to pick it unless it's a face normal, and then obviously you just pick the face. But if I know I have a tooling vector check to make sure that the vector is correct right you can come over here and pick that face and then in this case i'm going to have to reverse that but it is now normal to face it'll always be normal to face in case something happens and the face is no longer planar or if the face angle changes it's still planar and then the vector direction is still you know fixed in whatever direction you may not get what you want i'm going to select ok it's going to warn me new faces and edges will be generated to reduce update failures and downstream features that referenced the original section. You can map the curves of the original section to the curves of the new section. Would you like to map? No, I don't care. So that right there is now driving this. That little warning was because I originally had a point, and if I had mapped something to the holes or that point or whatever, just give me a warning if I want to remap. I had nothing linked, so it's not a big deal. Now, here's the beauty of this method. The intent is that this has to be so far away, always has to be so far away. If I look at my expressions right over here, all right, well, that's two. Maybe I need this to be three. All right, that's 58. Okay, now that is three. Maybe, let me double click on this fella. I need to change the diameter of this. Maybe I gotta go down to 12 or something different. Okay, we'll go down to 12. Select okay, now what you're gonna see happen, those are gonna move because I wanna maintain that relationship of two times edge distance. So this is a way to do that. Now what I've done when I'm designing things of this nature, and again, I know I'm beating that horse, I apologize, but it, I talk about it in some of my courses, is that, especially the sheet metal course, 
oftentimes what you're doing is you're just you have a hole and you have a hole you have a mounting flange and a mounting flange you're just trying to figure out a way to get multiple locations fastened together there's already a hole here there's already a hole here and now you just have to make sure that okay i'm making a flange it's got to bend it's got to do this well i have to maintain that edge distance so i often have the location already defined and I'm working on reverse engineering off of that location or I have a flange this is a new thing it's going to be so far away from an edge off of that flange how do I control the length of that flange and that'll be another video that I make to show you how I do that because I get long in the tooth and I know you guys don't like watching my videos even though you should watch them to the end but I will show you how I do that. But the nice thing about this is that now this hole is being defined minimum two times that edge distance. And if I have, again, a mating anything that needs to mate down below and it needs to maintain that same relationship, guess what I do? I guess I could go in there and create an expression or another offset datum plane. Or you can be very lazy like me, mirror geometry. I'm going to mirror this across this plane. So if this is going to shingle over the top of something and another block is going to go in this direction, well, that is the edge of the block that's going in the opposite direction, the edge of the part or whatever that may be. So everything now is being driven based on these points, these holes. This is, I should say, this is being driven from that. The diameter is being driven from that. So now if I change this and say, all right, well, this has got to be 100 wide. So I can control where that's at. And then I can control, all right, well, you know, design intent. I want to control the height of this thing. Okay, this is just an inch tall. Beautiful. And then, oh, you know what? I need to change the diameter of this. Beautiful. Very easy. A little bit smaller. Go to 10. And then, like magic, everything updates. This updated, this updated, this updated. So, of course, I would make an interface out of this, send it out, make an interface out of those points, send it out. And then boom, we know where the edges need to be. We know where the center points need to be. It's really a very smart way to build intent into the part. I'm relaying a message. So if somebody, I would give this a name, you know, edge of part, mating part, whatever that is. Center of whole pattern, whatever that may be, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And another thing that you can do is of course you know the whole size that you're using and you know when you go to the other model you can do there's inner part linking and all sorts of other things that you can do to help drive what's going on in the other model so like magic design intent it's it really can make modifying a model very easy if done correctly again it also tells a story to the next person that gets their hands on it and it's nice to be able to relay that information to that next person so you don't end up with that as i mentioned in the prior videos chaos and entropy on your screen anyway i really hope you learned something again it helps me out if you subscribe to the channel if you're not liking the video is also really useful comments are always fun and uh, i really appreciate all of you and without you i wouldn't be here doing this again thanks